you know, it's lovely at this time of lockdown to have a little virtual, a virtual cup of cheers. There yeah, you go. cheers, got, got me coffee, yeah, cheers. Uh, it's nice to see you. And um, this is kind of like a virtual, virtual lounge. Who's that? Look, look, we can see you. Oh, that's, that's my wife, Ali. She's, <laughs> she's moving. <laughs> she's okay, moving the washing. If, if she ducked down, we would have oh, The ironing, her. rather. So she's, <laughs> she's got to sneak through, move the ironing. So, uh, yeah, everything looks... Uh, well, it's, it's a normal house, isn't it? It's I mean, you know, Zara and Genevieve, homeschooling. Oh my goodness, you're doing that as well. I tell you what, I'm I'm in charge of maths, and um, yeah. and then the rest of it, she's doing her English on her own because I get I'm quite impatient, and I'm like, what do you mean you, you can't do that? I mean, it's terrible. It's hard though because they're they're only little. Mine's eight. You've got an eight year old as well. Yeah, yeah I got my uh, Genevieve's eight. Girls, you gotta be quiet. Talk to Jenny. What I was going to say is what I think we all realise is by helping with the homeschooling is how much we've forgotten. And we're like, oh, hang on, I do know yeah. the answer to that. I might just have to Google it. Yeah, it's just kind of weird, isn't it, you know? Yeah, I know, exactly. How are you coping, by the way? Are you staying healthy? Is it all good? Joe Wicks. Oh, you're doing that. Joe Wicks, every morning, nine o'clock. So well, we're up early anyway, but Joe Wicks is right. Come on, Joe, and we'll get a gym stuff. And... Um, I feel I've been, I've missed one, I've missed one, and feel really good. Uh, and plus I've been a lot of gardening, a bit of DIY stuff and things like that, and just just a lots of walks. We're lucky where we live because we can literally just walk through a stile and, and we're into green field. So we're really, really lucky where we live. I mean, I, I do, I mean, my mum, for instance, <clears throat> excuse me, she's in a two bedroom flat in, in Islington and, uh, and she's on her own. And that's kind of difficult. That's kind of difficult. And if you're in a tower block with kids and stuff, and my man, nan and granddad used to live in a tower block on the 21st floor. So I, I do know what it's like. And it must be awful if you've got young children that are wanting to go out all the time. Yeah, tough. I know. And that's why, I mean, we're, we're lucky that we're still allowed to go out and do that one walk or one run because yeah. some countries are not allowing <clears throat> at all. I, I think it's so important, especially when the weather's been nice as well. Well, it's, I mean, that's the thing is, I mean, my, my sister-in-law, um, she's a pharmacist, so she's working frontline NHS and stuff like that. And she's got a pretty tough job. Um, but her, her chap, he lives in Mallorca and he's a, he, he goes hiking. That's what he does. He, he takes people kayaking and hiking. He's not allowed to even leave the house. He's not even allowed to go for a walk on the hills or anything on his own. So I, I think we've been really lucky. And we just got to hope that, that we get back to normal as soon as possible, really, or, or some sort of normality. I know, and but I, you say that, the new, like the new normal, we're all developing new normals now. So there are some <laughs> things we're probably getting quite used to. Well, like this, doing, you know, stuff on Zoom and, uh, you know, are, are you going to travel up to Manchester to do BBC breakfast? Uh, who knows? I don't know. I mean, the, so much of it, I think, will be done remotely in in the future and I think it, uh, this certainly will change a lot of things I mean I've been doing stuff I've done breakfast time tv in Australia New Zealand uh, America I'm doing this big thing in Los Angeles um, it's like a little club of 500 people and it's um, it, it's all the showbiz people and everything else it's quite amazing actually and uh, Liam Payne was doing it the other night Charlie Puth and I was singing a song and uh, yeah, it, it's kind of, it's just kind of Alfie Bow and, and we all just sing songs. And then you get these Hollywood legends that come on and uh, like Randy Newman, you know, you got a friend in me, it's like, that's Randy Newman. And so it's 500 people and they raise money and, and we get nurses and doctors on and stuff like that. And they're raising money for the Cedar sinai uh, Cedar sinai Hospital. <clears throat> so it's quite amazing. So. You know, it, it's it's just got, and we just do little songs. Oh, so have you so have you got a set up there? Because I've been looking on your Instagram. I mean, you've been doing a few songs on social media as well, and you always look like you're in an amazing studio. Is that your house? No, the the um, no. See, I'm not technical at all. I I can't. I mean, I I just about operate this this computer here. Um, I did the one with Gary Barlow before we went into lockdown. And I was in the studio with Gary Stevenson, so working on the new album. And uh, so I've got a couple of producers, Gary Stevenson, Mick Lister, and we've got a couple of cracking songs and a whole album's worth of material to finish. So just before lockdown, and Gary phoned me at Gary Barlow, said, Tom, do you think we can do a quick song together? So literally I'd finished 
singing this song in the studio and we and then I did uh, my bit of somebody to love sent it over to Gary with the gaps and he then puts himself and fills the gaps in I got you that's how they do it it's good yeah, it was I've got to say it was I loved it it was why did you choose that queen cover well he suggested a spandex right. song <laughs> and I, said, I can't I can't I, I can't do one of them uh, I'm not allowed so um so, uh, so, so I said, well, why don't we do Somebody to Love by Queen? Because I'm a massive Queen freak anyway. And then, I mean, another thing I've been doing as well is I, I started last week doing a little bit of mu a musical journey. The first song that I ever sung at Pontus. Oh, Camp. We've got to talk about this. Okay. Because it's so good. And it's, you said it's the first song you sang. Is yeah. it 1974? 1974, Brain Sands at Pontins Holiday Camp. Yeah. It's the first time you, you were on stage on your own. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's really funny because, you know, people see me on stage and, and I love being on stage. I mean, I absolutely adore it. And, uh, you, you know, so, so I enjoy every second of it. But before I got the confidence to go on stage, I really struggled with, with my confidence and stuff. And so this was the first time I ever actually took the, the plunge and uh, in front of 400 people did the song forgot the words halfway through. And as I said, it is, it's literally haunted me ever since. And I sort of strolled off stage just kind of trying to be a cheeky chappy kind of thing. Anyway, people said to me, hey, son, you're not, you know, you sound all right. You've not got a bad voice. And, uh, and I also, the girl that I fancied all week, I, I, we, we, we ended up going out. <laughs> oh. and, then, and then people asked me for my autograph and I thought, aye, aye, this could be good. So that, that was it. That's when I decided that I definitely wanted to be a singer. How old were you then? About 14. Oh, wow. So that was it. And the thing is, though, I suppose the only way to get your confidence through doing that is by doing it again and for it to go well. Yeah, well, the next, the next week, because um, we were there for two weeks, um, I sang with a little help from my friends, Joko, you know, what would you do if I sang? And I had all the lyrics. Uh, all the lyrics were basically there's no way I was going to forget the words. And then years later, um, ended up doing a, a thing with Joe Cocker as well. Uh, we did an orchestral show together, well, quite a few orchestral shows. And he's a lovely man, lovely man. Can I ask, how often is it that an artist will sing, but they'll have the words like on an auto cue or held up at the front of the stage? Does that happen a lot? I, well, I try to resist it, if I'm really honest. If I'm doing a new show and I've got lots of new songs, then I, I might have autocue just for the first couple of shows. But it's really important you get the words in, in your head. But then so I like, guess you've got so many songs in your head, it's sometimes you're like, I've got blank, I've got blank. Stacks. I mean, stuff. I even still remember my old um, my old school songs. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the words to that, which is ridiculous. There are, there's so many songs going, there's swing songs, there's rock songs, there's all sorts of stuff. And... Um, but on this little musical sort of journey that I'm going to do, I'm going to sort of pick, pick songs that, um, you know, when I first won a talent competition, um, the song that I got married to and uh, uh, Chasing Car, Snow Patrol and stuff like that, which I've never sung, so I've got to learn it. One and, of my favourite songs as well. Oh, it's beautiful, yeah. yeah. So I, I want to kind of just go through this little musical journey. And there's a, I mean, there's a band that a lot of people don't know uh, called Hoopus, Hoopuskank. Right. A song called The Reason. And me and my wife were in Sardinia and all of a sudden came on the Italy VH1 or whatever, or MTV. And I was like, what's this song? It's amazing. Beautiful, beautiful song. So um, so I'm, I'm going to go on a little musical journey. Yeah, it's because I guess this summer with everything that's going on, I guess yeah. any plans you did have to go and do some shows are oh, now back. Yeah. <laughs> was, uh, I mean, this year started off fantastically because... Um, I was doing the Young Voices show, which is uh, all Teenage Cancer Trust, and uh, and it's with like sort of five to eight thousand children behind us, and we did a twenty four arena day tour. So that was January and February, beautiful start to the year, and um, and yeah, I mean festivals in Italy, festivals in Spain, festivals in Scandinavia, UK festivals, America. We just I just got back, in fact, just before the lockdown because we were uh, I meant to go to Singapore. That got cancelled because of the coronavirus. Japan stayed open, so we did the shows there. Went to Australia and then went to America and we did a, a big cruise ship there and literally just got home before they locked down. 
And then we found that someone on the ship actually was carrying, you know, the, the old virus and stuff. So, so we were lucky. Yeah. I know it's quite, it's, it's quite a scary time really. And um, there's so many people that are doing incredible things. Oh, well, that's why we all go out yeah. on a Thursday, isn't it? And we clap and we cheer. We do it every night. It's, it's lovely because we live in a tiny little village. It's more like Hamlet. And everyone, we all get the pots and pans out and stuff. A little glass of wine last night. And, and it is, I mean, you know, we got friends, you know, Joy, one of our great friends, she's an ICU consultant. And uh, like I said, my sister-in-law, she's a pharmacist. So she's dealing with, and she's only recently got PPE equipment. Uh, we've got friends of ours, nurses at Stoke Mandeville and stuff. And they are, you know, they're, they're, they are incredible. And they're, they're, they're amazing what they're doing. But then there are a lot of other people, the teachers, the, the, the people that are keeping the supermarkets open, uh, all the care workers, you know, that's a tough job. That's a really tough job, looking after all those people and all the people who still deliver stuff, you know, your groceries and everything else. So there's a lot to be thankful for. There really is. And one of the things as well I've noticed is that with more and more of us spending time at home, well, we should be doing more things around the house. We, at, my house should be a lot tidier, the amount of time I'm spending. I think your house looks really good. It looks tight. Yeah, it's good. I just plump them behind me. The rest of it's a complete mess. I like the colour scheme. It, look, it looks good to me. Oh, just, I mean, I must admit, my, my wife thinks I'm obsessed. She thinks I'm OCD. Oh, you see, well, I am OCD, but I live with messy people, mm -hmm. so I've just given in cleaning up for them. In fact, I was going to say, yesterday, yeah. I actually cut my husband's hair because, you know, it's got to I that stage. That. You look, I thought I was going to say, you look like you've had a trim. No, it's ridiculous. Look, it's all, look, there's bits of grey coming through. <laughs> so, <laughs> Would so you I, trust anyone in your house to cut it? I don't trust my daughters. <laughs> Zara will shave it off just for the fun of it. She would just... Uh, um, so I'm going to see if Ali can, but the only thing that we've got are the dog shears, the dog clippers. We're not like that, those ones. <laughs> oh, we've got some of them for the gum. So we've got these dog, dog, dog uh, clippers. So I'm hoping that... And I had a word with her this morning, and I said, look, you know, do the variable, you know, lengths. And so, so clean the dog clippers. And uh, you might see a brand new me. Who knows? <laughs> Looks good. I do love you. Put a picture up the other day of you with your hair from 1983. Because oh. there's a lot of in that photo. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's, um, I mean, we all had mullets and stuff like that. I mean, but, but this is getting high. I mean, how high is this going to go? I don't know, you know. You just go so, for a nice mullet again then. Yeah. I, I just look like an 80s bygone person or something, you know. Um, but, uh, no, but every, everything, you know, it's, it's weird times, but it, and I, I tell you what is hard. I think it's hard, you know, we were talking about people living in, alone and stuff like that. And I think that's where it's, it's really, really tough, you know, uh, and, and sort of the over 70s who can't go out at all. And that, that's kind of really feel for, for, for people like that. We, you know, we are lucky because we can take a walk, walk across a field. But, um, but, you know, we'll get through it as we, as we always do. And we, you know, we move on and, and I, I can't, I'm gagging to do another a proper gig with my band. We had a Zoom with my band, actually. I call them the Fabulous TH band because they're just such brilliant musicians. And um, so we had a, a Zoom. There was about 10 of us all on there, some of the crew and everything. And it was like, yay, crazy. You, know? you maybe have to do some more duets online because we love seeing the Gary one as well. Is there anyone else that maybe you could get on board? Anyone you'd like to duet with? Well, we're it's the technical. It's the technical side of it. So I left it all to Gary because he's technical. But um, Richie, our guitarist, I'm talking about maybe trying to do something with our band so we can all do a split screen thing. So, but Richie's more technical than me, and he, he will he, Richie be, and he'll be looking into that. Uh, they, they don't even let me near the mixing desk. It's, <laughs> I'm so bad. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, that would be good. I tell you what else. Now I've got to say this because it's something that. Well, we play Spandau Valley on Smooth all the time. Massive. We're doing, we're going for the all-time top 500 songs at the moment on Smooth, and guaranteed, guaranteed Spandau songs will rate very highly okay. on the So That's good. I mean, always good, always yeah. good. Is there ever a chance that you guys would all perform together again? Because you know, from a fan point of view, we would be winning if that was ever happening. Yeah. Did you know what? I think the whole thing is really sad, and um, and I've, I've never said publicly and I probably never will say exactly why I left and uh it it, it just got to the point I, I couldn't I couldn't do it anymore and uh yeah, you know for whatever reason and uh it just just got it just all went too far 
Uh, and as, as I said, you know, I didn't resign from a band like Spano Valley because we had two tours together. We, you know, we, I thought we were getting on all right, actually. And, um, you know, you don't resign because someone puts sugar in your tea or something or, you know, or gave you a goat's cheese pastry or something. I hate goat's cheese. You know, you, you, you resign from a band like Spano because it's something very, very specific. And I think, uh, I think some, uh, some of the fans saw uh, Ross William Wilde, who was my replacement for a while, I think they saw how he was he was treated, and I thought that, that was oh okay, uh, maybe there's more more to this than meets the eye kind of thing. And um, you know, because I you know I think over the over the time I've been blamed for a lot of what's gone on with Spando. It's because Tone's ego or something like that, and it's never to do with ego. It's always to do with politics. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, but I'm listen. I'm really happy doing what I do at the moment. Nothing. <laughs> But, but I, I just I love my I love my band. We we get on so well. We're all friends. We have got young kids together as well, so that's really great. And um, so and working on a new album. Um, got two singles ready to go already. So we're quite excited. Yeah. You know what? I was in Spain last year on holiday, and you were playing at the hotel, and uh, we couldn't get in. We couldn't get in because it was so booked up, but we could hear oh. you, we could hear you from the bar, and uh, you sounded amazing. <laughs> like it, it, it's amazing thinking that you're you got in touch with one of the uh, you know, my people, and they could have. <laughs> I know I was like that. I really want to do. It. We, oh, we fact, this is how sad it was. At one stage, we walked past. I mean, this is yeah. this. This is terrible. We walked past and we lifted our daughter who was seven up so she could look over the wall. We're like, can you see? And she's like, yes. Was this I in Mallorca? In uh, Marbella. Marbella. Marbella, that's it. We played the, um, I think it was the tennis club or something yeah, like that. that was it. Oh, you should have tried to find someone, just ask for, ask for someone and we would have put you, got you in, got your pass. Well, it was a great gig from what we heard. We just oh. couldn't. But that's, that just shows what you usually are doing in the summer as well. You're playing yeah. outside events. And that's why it's, it must be even harder for you not to be able to do the job that clearly is fun, amazing, and you oh, love it. It's wonderful. I mean, it is, we're, we're, we're very lucky to be music. I mean, I've done normal jobs and, I, you know, I've worked in hotels and... Oh, happy. Oh, what, okay, I want to know, I wanna know the, the job that you... The most normal job you've done that you that before? I worked at British Home Stores in the lighting department. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of people know that. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I, well, I worked at yeah British Home Stores on, on Oxford Street in the lighting department. I was supplying the lights from the warehouse. But no, I've, done, I've, I've stacked shelves in, you know, like a little sort of dairy, Tom's Dairy at the top of where my mum lives. I've worked down Chapel Market. You know, so I've, I've done, I've been in publishing and sales and I've done lots of different stuff. And then, thank God, signed a record contract when I was 20 and, and the rest is kind of history. I'll tell you what's difficult, though, is it's very difficult for young bands now because years ago, you know, you, I don't know, say there were 10 bands, you got picked to be signed, you got the advance from the record company and, and you could dedicate yourself to music, to promotion, and everything else. And a lot of the young bands now, it, they're having to take sort of secondary jobs to, to, to just, they can't do music all the time, you know, because there's just not enough money in it. And I think that, that that's really sad. Um, so, but, you know, times it's change, I suppose. It's a difficult industry to break into, especially with so many people wanting to have a go as well. That's oh. the thing. So, well, uh, it, it's, it's tough, isn't it? I mean, I, I think the biggest misnomer, funny enough, I was talking to my wife about this the other day, the biggest misnomer about, being in, in your business, my business, is that people see people on TV or at radio or the theatre and they think, oh, what's it like to be you? Is this a panacea for my life? Is, are all my troubles going to dissipate and, 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 and walk away kind of thing? No, it's, just, it's a job. It's a wonderful job and it's a beautiful job, but you've still got the same issues that you had whatever job you do, you know. Um, but for some reason, they just think being on TV, like, you become this different person. You don't. It's just. It is just a job. What time are you getting up at the moment? About seven thirty. Oh, good. Not doing too much. Eight. Yeah, seven thirty, quarter to eight. Get, Zara's um, got to be up at school. She's in school at eight twenty on visual school, uh, and Jen's got to start. We start after Joe Wicks at nine thirty with Jen. Yeah. So. Okay. And um, Tony, thank you for chanting to me today. It's been, yeah, it's been nice to chat, actually. Yeah, really nice. Um, 
It's good. Are you keeping well, your family and everything? Yeah. Everything is all good here as well. So I do feel that I'm um, in lockdown. It's great. And we're obviously we're keeping healthy, which is the main thing. Yeah. I do feel like I just I sit here a lot. Of my I, day. Say, yeah. so I do feel like I need to be more active, even though I'm doing like going for a walk or a run or whatever I do. Yeah. It's it's a different it's a different way of living, but do you know what? It's as long as we're all healthy, that's all that matters. Well, it's, this is it. I got to, I spoke to a friend of mine. He's a he runs a company and stuff just up the road, and it was his day off yesterday. I said, "Oh, so you're right." And Joe said, "Yeah, yeah." He said, uh, "I'm out with, out with the wife and the kids and stuff." I said, "How's it all going?" He said, "He said, well, I take Thursdays off to make sure my wife's not exploded and gone absolutely mental because she's homeschooling four and and under tens." Oh, wow. You know, and there's been a few few tears and stuff like that. And it's like, come on, you can do it. You know, you know, I don't know the answer, but you can. You can what are you going to do when it's, this is all over? Um, I'm going to, I, well, I was meant to be doing the London Marathon. So I feel oh, like, wow. I, I feel like I'd like to go on a really long run. And I know it sounds really, yeah. stupid, it's really crazy. I want to go and play golf. I want to just, everything I want to do is outside. So, you like golf? Yeah, I love it. And I'm missing it like mad. I'm the worst. I play once a year in the Tony Hadley Golf Classic up in Peterborough. We do it for Action Medical Research. And I'm the and they say to me, how many times you play golf this year, Tom? Nope. <laughs> and of course, I tee off and I get the whole bunch of fans come up to watch me. And then I get really nervous and the ball goes in the bushes and everywhere. So, uh, no, golf is not my forte, I have to say. You still give it a go. So that's, that's a good well, one. I'll give it a go, yeah. Yeah, like, so like I'm going to do some putting practice in my garden this afternoon. If the weather's nice. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> it's, it's really good small good. garden. <laughs> what are you doing uh, yourself? Yeah, I know. Look, thank you so much for this. Oh, brilliant to chat. So nice to chat to you. Stay safe. Say hi to all the family. And hopefully we'll see you on the other side. And if I'm in Marbella again and you're doing a gig, I'm calling your people. Just call my people and we'll get, you know, sort it out. <laughs> Thanks, good. Take care, Bye-bye. Love to all.